Hey friends, Chad from Soundflow here, and today I wanted to walk through how to use Soundflow with Isotope RX11 and specifically answer this question that Eric had on the forum. So Eric is asking, how do I set up a trigger to get a module from R Isotope RX11 to select a specific preset and then render it? So this is kind of similar to an audio suite open render close kind of workflow that we use a lot on the Pro Tools side of Soundflow automation but wanting to do that with a module in Isotope RX, which I think is a really cool idea. And yeah, I'd like to kind of get into it. So I don't know exactly what he's tried so far, but I kind of want to walk through a couple of things uh, to get, get started because we don't give a ton of time to our Isotope package. And I think it is a really powerful package that um, more people should know about. So if you don't know, there is an Isotope RX package on the store already, and we have a bunch of commands built in. There are commands built specifically for rendering modules. So you can render the declick module. You can open, close, and toggle the declick module as an example. You can also do um, something like searching presets in the current module and rendering the current module. But currently, the, uh, the render module command doesn't take a parameter of a preset. So that could change in the future. But um, but for now, like I wanted to kind of walk through how I would approach this from a macros point of view. So I'm going to go to my form help folder here. We're just going to create a new macro and call it, uh, let's see, open and render preset for isotope rx. And do that. And then, um, yeah, so then we can start by adding an action to just open a specific module. So I'm going to mess around with using the uh, the declick module. That's one that I use a ton. It's one that I already have a bunch of custom presets for that I, I use very often. Um, so anyway, I, I'm going to start with that. So if I do add action, I can now um, search for module open toggle. So um, you can filter this list on the left here by clicking on these folders. And you'll notice that there's the option to, I can just use the direct um, open toggle declick action here. This will actually um, toggle by default. So it's going to hide it whenever I, I run this. So if I make a key command for this real quick, it's going to open and close it like that. And that's not exactly what I want. So I'm actually going to use the other option here. Let's do module, open, close, toggle. So yeah, I went through that a little bit quickly. Uh, let's do this again. These um, base commands here, that's a module, open, close, toggle, and then don't have another preset after it, that gives you the ability to kind of craft more of a custom preset. So this could be more of like a custom template command that you could use over and over again, you could just duplicate the command and then change the module. So you can see here, I have the ability to change the module here. I can select declick like that. And then I can select open so that whenever I hit this command, control X, I'm hitting it now, hitting it again. Every time this blue light blinks, it's, uh, it's being run. And so you can see it's just always going to stay open, which is what I want. So the next step, you might think that the best next action would be the pop-up menu select. That's definitely what our team tried initially, um, is to just be like, oh yeah, I'm just going to select this pop-up menu, and it's got the you know preset path to that. And then now I can just give it a name of like, you know, low end clicks here. So if I do low end clicks like that, this should select this. But you can see it's actually it's it's airing out. It's saying it can't find the pop-up menu. This is a unique feature of the UI of Isotope RX specifically. And so we have to work around it just a little bit differently. And I want to kind of walk through that. So we're actually just going to use a, a traditional click UI element command here. This is one of the most common commands when scripting with Soundflow. So if I hop back over here and select this as the the first step. So now it's just going to click on this. It's not going to try to pick um, an actual preset from this list. But you'll notice that if I have this open and then I add another click UI element here, let's see here. Um, so, okay, so it closed automatically. This is a, an important kind of tool to learn. So whenever you're in this pick mode where you, know, you have the ability to kind of hover around different buttons and things, if you hold command, so I'm holding the command key now, and click on something, then it doesn't 
leave the, the pick mode. It allows you to keep going. And so I'm actually in pick mode still while this menu is open. But normally, if I just clicked on the, uh, the menu here without command held, I'd be exiting pick mode immediately. But because I didn't do that, I can actually choose a different um, preset from this list. And it's, it's able to read the path to that specific preset. So in this case, it'll be periodic clicks. Let's do that. So um, I clicked, you'll notice nothing really happened, but if I hop back over here, you'll see that we now have a click UI element for the pop-up button presets, and then we have a click UI element for the periodic clicks. So now, if I run this full workflow, it's selecting that periodic clicks preset for me, which is great. And then the next step is just to render that uh, specific module. So what I will do then is do add action and we'll do render. You could do render current module. I'm going to do a, a slightly different way. I'm going to, again, use this kind of generic version of this command, not the preset, but the generic version. And then I can render dclick specifically. So then now, if I'm kind of zoomed in here, I'm not sure if there's any clicks around, but we'll find some. And yeah, so if I run this full workflow now, it's going to render that declick action for me. And I probably would use a different <laughs> preset for this specific kind of click, but that's okay. Uh, that if, So now if I wanted to go and change this, I could, um, so I could have this be a command for periodic clicks like this. And then say I wanted to have a different one that was more of like mouth clicks. Um, so. I, I will often use this uh, multi-band one a lot. So, and that's also like a really long thing to write out. And you actually would have to have the path written in there of the option plus n if you used like a direct path like that. But thankfully, we can just use the pick button. So what I'm going to actually do now is just duplicate this command. So if I do edit duplicate like that, I can have another version of this with the kind of the same setup and make this more of a mouth click. I know there's the mouth declick, but we're just doing this for, you know, sake of an example. So now, yeah, so what I'm doing now is I'm changing the pick action for the second click UI element, holding command so that I can get into this menu, go into the top of the list, and then we'll just do that uh, top multiband preset there. So then now you can see it's captured that, and we're ready to go. So um, I'm going to highlight this. And you can see, yeah, it's slightly more effective for whatever that click is. It's not even really a bad click, but it's more of an example. So I hope that makes sense. This is a pretty basic example. And then, of course, if you wanted to, you could always um, convert this to a script. So this is another really powerful feature of the macro editor is that I can convert this to JavaScript and then potentially do more with this setup. So um, for instance, I could... Uh, you know, I, I could have a variable at the top that is the preset name. And that way I could actually use a script like this. So let's do what preset name like this. And we will call, which one now? Single band click. Uh, we'll, well, I, that might be the default. So let's do mouth noise multiband. And it will be case sensitive. So let's make sure we've got that. Where to go? Yeah, cool. Um, so then now, yeah, this is the equivalent of that first part of the uh, macro here. It's calling that module open, close, toggle with the parameters, declick, and enable. And then this second command here is the equivalent of clicking on the preset menu for that, that module. And then this third action here is where we're actually selecting the uh, the specific element from that list. And yeah, so if I replace this string here, whose title is with preset name, I can now use this instead and change the preset name just here at the top like this. So if I now run this, let's close this out just to show it. Oh yeah, I just... Uh, ran it for the whole selection. That's great. Um, but yeah, you can see it's it's opening to that specific preset. 
And if even if I change the preset now, it'll hop back to that. So then you can put this on you know, a specific key command. You could also add it to a stream deck, whatever you want to do. But this is, yeah, this is a great way around um, being able to kind of open render. And then if you wanted to close, you could also duplicate this. So we'll show this now. So now it can open render close um, entirely from one macro. Let's do that. And there you go. Um, so yeah, I'll take some photos of this to post on the forum as well, just so that you can see kind of like how you would set up a macro like this. The most important part is going to be when you're doing pop-up menus in um, Isotope RX, it's important to remember to first open the menu by clicking on it. So that's what we're doing here. And then you can select um, by holding command, clicking on the menu, and then releasing command so that you can pick one of these uh, elements here. So now we've picked random clicks. You can see that's there. You can run this command and... There you go. So cool. I hope that's helpful. Thanks for watching, and we'll see you next time.